Uh, thanks, Eddie, Jack, or for having me here. Um, this is my stuff. You guys, you got it on the uh, outline also. I am I'm honored to be here. Please, I've already gotten a few emails. Um, reach out to me. I, I have, uh, the game's been really good to me. That's, that's, uh, there's no doubt about that. And I like to give back as much as I can. So I'm just going to jump into it. Um, throughout this process, if you have any questions, just ask. No big deal, very informal. Here's our basic offensive plan. We want to score first. Okay? Because then it takes two to take the lead. We're going to work real hard on defense, don't get me wrong. But defensively, we're going to keep the force in order and keep you in first base. We're very rarely going to make a lead base throw. We want to win every inning. We're going to extend the inning with two outs. That's big for us. You get two outs, you keep going. You keep demoralizing for the other team. We want to score without hits. We want to draw more walks and strikeouts. We want to get runners to third base with one out or no out so we can pressure. And understand this, our pressure starts when we step in the box. And it doesn't stop when we touch home plate. We want the pressure to continue. We want people to play us and expect what we're going to do and prepare for us and what they're going to get. So, so with that, our suicide, safety, contact, greed, our leads, we do it in BP every day. And I'll get to that later. But, but know this, our guys are green light. They do have a sign not to run. Uh, now, sometimes, and I don't care if they get thrown. I've got a sign that says, don't run. And then I, sometimes they'll be too passive. And I warned them in a second, I was telling Andy this two pitches ago, man. Now, I can't get you to second. I don't want to sack and give up an out. But now we're rolling to a double play. It's got to be in a third with one out. And a double play, we're out of the thing. So get moving. So we're going to push pace. Uh, I like what Coach Robinson said outside. First two pitches, they're gone. Hopefully, we're going on the first pitch. Now, there's a lot that goes into that we'll get into later. We're not going to just run into house, OK? We're going to know what we're getting as a group. We're going to do our homework on our opponent in game. And we're going to know what it takes to get it. But we will try our best not to give up an out to move the runner up in scoring position. Now, if they do score on us, we're going to try to answer immediately. And what that means is we may go sack the game then if we have to, if it's called. We're going to try to answer right now. Okay? Two beginnings, hopefully. That's three or more runs. <coughs> hopefully early. We think six runs. Six runs will be very difficult to beat us with how we play defense, we think, how we force contact, how we think we're sound enough to handle things. That's big for us. Two big ones usually ones for us. Base running. On base percentage is our biggest stat. We want to be on half the time. It's that simple. It's, guys, I'm telling you, if we can get on base half the time in a game, we're going to win. Unless we're just pitching and kicking it. That happens, right? We're going to pressure, pressure, pressure. It sounds crazy run full speed. Aggressively all the time. And the guys, that's all the time. Okay, we practice it that way. In my last uh, presentation, we talked about in practice, base hit to anywhere, single anywhere, our guys are going to second base 100% of the time. There's lots of value in that. They're at full speed. Okay? And it's also putting pressure on our defense to make a play. It's allowing them to communicate. It just allows us to reinforce running full speed and aggressively all the time. We're going to take pride in our base running ability. We're going to be alert. We're always obviously going to look for the next base. Anticipation is key. We anticipate dirt reads, steals, overthrows. It's lead base mentality. Man. Um, we're not going to cruise in to a base where there's a throw being made. I'll tell you this. Single to left field, we're playing y'all. We are through first base, and we are full speed until you let go of the ball in the left field. 
every single time. Now, teams that try to throw backside, you know, to kind of temper it down, that's fine. Because we're full speed. And once you let it go, we'll have time to get back. Okay? Or if he throws it, we may just keep one second. Short stop. Make sense? Done that many times. So we're pressuring out of the box. Basic philosophy. Okay. So before every pitch, our guys need to come number of outs. Sign. Sign me quickly. We're pushing the pace. Okay? We want to win this. We want to win this time game. We're ready. We're in the box. Let's go. Defensively, well, and with that, so when we take the field, we're going to get our warm-up pitches in. We're going to hustle our ass on the field, get our five in. Pitchers got the ball, the other team, the, 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 the guy coming to hit that, he doesn't even have his elbow. Let's play. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um, so defensively, what are they doing? What are they giving us? Into the middle, deep, playing back. Are they... Um, are they working in and out? You know, are they active? What's the catcher doing? Is he a lazy guy? Is he peak the third? The runner at third? Is the catcher giving up the pitch? Okay? Um, those are big for us. How important is your run? How important are you right now? Are we in a tie game in the seventh? Okay? Are we down six? How important is your run? Always know where the ball is. Field conditions. Huge. Back to the defense. Is, is the outfield playing deep? Right? Are they deep? Do they think we can actually hit the ball out of the yard for some reason? But well, we're going to take the extra base. We're going to know he's got to come in 10 extra steps from home. Field while that's going on, we're taking the extra base. Okay? Use the base coaches only when necessary. We will have practices where we take the coaches totally out of it. Hand it to the kids and be aware of it. Now with that, um, the awareness piece is most of the battle. So why not in practice let them learn to be aware on their own? There are times to go over science. There are times to coach them on to stop or to slide and stop. We do all that. You can do those at other times of practice. But to me, putting it in their hands is huge. The less they can count on us, the better base runners and more aware they'll be in my opinion. We want to combine a threatening bunt game with our running game. We want to create negative angles and holes in the defense. Guys, we'll do that just by stepping in the box. Because everybody on my team, everybody on my team is capable of bunting because we work on it. And it's a part of our repertoire. Um, now, you know, the shift, right? Big deal. Know our philosophy is this. On base percent. They shift us. We're going to bunt. Now, I've had a few guys that the coach wants me to bunt him, right? I don't want his ass to bunt him because he's getting ready to hit it out of the yard. There are always circumstances that dictate otherwise. But basic philosophy, we're going to bunt that ball there. We're going to get on first because we know we're going to get on second. Okay? That's just what we do. Um, fake bunt, we do that a lot. Fake steal, we'll do it early just to check certain things. Coverages, first and third, fake steal. I'm checking middle to see what they're doing. If, if the catcher doesn't re-sign, I know what they're in, I can dictate what I want to do offensively. Real simple thing to do. Amazed at how many times we're able to do that. Okay? Well, we're going to effectively utilize our clock time. We've got three coaches and a player four times we're getting in the dugout. Okay? Pitcher first move to the catcher glove time and the catcher glove to the middle infield glove time. If he reaches, it's in our favor. It takes time. You know, when you're teaching tag stuff on defense, let the ball get there. Pull the pack. If he's stepping and reaching and stepping back, that's in our favor. Two times. Combo three, four plus, what does that mean? If we get more than that, we think we can go. Now, tempo. This is the most important. We'll talk about three, four again later. Time it once he comes set. Can we lean or can we fall? Okay? Or do we have to? I was talking to Andy about this. We're going to go, right? So if we got a, a pitcher that's, he's going to slide step. They all slide step. But it's a 1-4. You with me? 
We got an average high school catcher that's a two-two. What's that combination? Well, that's plus, right? So does that take a great move to us? Well, our guys know in practice from doing it on their own from their max lead on a good jump when they slide in and touch it, we'll time it. And they'll know if they can get it or not. Not all guys run the same, right? Or does he have a great move? Okay, good pickoff move. Now he can't get a max lead. Okay, that's fine. But we got a 2-2 two -two catcher, right? And now, the leaning ball's coming. And so, you've heard it, you can go one, two, three, four, that's the tempo, or U, C, L, A. We will have our guys in practice, practice saying that at that tempo. It's pretty simple. If we want to go and we get a tempo, coach, he's a C, I got you. We're going to lean first on L to C. Okay? You follow me? Coach, he's a C. Check that. He's an L, coach. He's an L. One, two, three. U, C, L. He's an L. On C, we're here. Boom, we're gone when he gets L. Because that is when he starts. Are you following me? Really important. Now, we work on it in our technique stuff. All the guys will count it out. And we're going to go, once we're leaning and we're getting it, we're going to then vault. Okay? So, he's a C guy, coach. He's a C. He's a two, coach, because some guys count by one, two, three, four. Others, U, C, L, A. It's the same tempo, whatever works in their mind. But if he's a C guy, guess what we're doing on you? Boom, we're gone. And when he starts his hands, we've got seven feet more. He can be a 1-1. One, one. It don't matter. In a 2-2, two, two, we got it. Okay? Now, will you get picked off some? Yep. This is most effective at second base. Can you do it at first? You betcha. You betcha. Okay? And we're big on it, and we work on it every single day. Now, what if the tempo changes and you're at second base? Okay? You simply, because we're going to lean first, tempo change, we're giving ground. We're out of it. We changed his tempo. We thought it was a C. Ah, he went L. Or he no look. Okay. But let's see if he gets back into what he did most was, let's say, an L. Or three. Okay. Let's see if he gets back into that in a pressure situation, right, where he's got to make the pitch. More than likely he will. Okay. But think of what this is doing for us as a club. We've got them thinking about us on the bases. Well, heck yeah, man. Now, if you're not focusing on that pitch, we're accomplishing a lot right there through pressure. Okay? Um, how's his pick move tendencies? Does he slide step at second? I tell you, if you play us and you don't slide step and work second, you're going to have to. Because we'll steal third every single time. Okay? Uh, we do a lot of, we try to steal pitches out of the pitchers, uh, hand before he pitches, because most pitchers aren't taught how to hide the ball, okay, with a runner. So, I ain't worried about the signs. We're going to look at the pitcher, see if we can get a tendency. If we get a breaking ball, automatic go. We're going. Question. Obviously, we, we do a good job of a scouting report. Okay, before games we'll have an idea, certainly <coughs> conference opponents, y'all call them district opponents. We're going to do a lot of work on our opponents from an offensive standpoint to see what we can get. And during games as well. Okay, we're learning what they're giving us, their strengths, their weaknesses, and we'll communicate. Um, strengths and weaknesses, uh, we never want to miss a sign. We're going to get them early and push the pace again. The sign I give them is to take off the stolen base. They're free to go. Okay? But let's say, for example, I know they're going to pitch out. Right? I just take it off. And it's off until I reactivate with another side. Oh, you're free to go again. Alright, so um, so quality at bat, here's my from my experience. Okay? 
We talk about quality at bats. We want to have a quality at bat. Don't waste a freaking at bat. Okay? If we get 20 or more in a game, that's only one out of three batters per inning, seven in a game. One out of three, we're going to win 90% of the time. That's the data it's given me. That is no joke. That is no joke. Okay? I can tell you right now, if we have a game where somebody punches us out 12, 13, 14 times, we are not going to have 20 plus quality at bats. So that goes to, okay, do my guys have an idea about what to do when they're at the dish? And are they capable of making adjustments? I think it's our job to teach them how to do it and not just say, make an adjustment. Well, do they know what the hell you're talking about? Okay? I like to think my guys do. Sometimes they surprise me, but I do think they understand at least the concept of what we're trying to get from. Andy, I spelled your name wrong. Should be another T there. No offense. Okay? But do you players know? Two plus two, man. I sat with Andy two years ago, Andy, right? Rock Hill. He said, Coach, two plus two. What's that equal? I said, four. He said, man, if they're going to hesitate, they really don't know four. And he's right. Chart it, reward it. Chart it, reward it. After every game, we do not post it. Under our practice plan the next day, that is, it's posted right there. So this is my assistant keeps this. Sack bunt, that's quality at bat. But Anyway, sack bunt, bunt for hit, bunt for hitting 10, okay? Now, we're gonna do that, okay? We're just gonna measure that because bunt for hit in 10, Again, back to our pressure, we're showing negative angles, all that. We're going to give them credit for that. Hit and run, move runner, RBI. Less than two outs, hard hit. Okay, eight pitch plus at bat, regardless if you reach or not, or reach other. Reach other would be like a base hit, right? Or, or any other way. Anyway, we totally each player come up on the grand total. Any comments? Then my assistant that keeps it wants to make it. He makes it there, we post it. Again. 20 or more, we're going to win. So, in quality at-bats, part of the plan is compete now, right freaking now. Okay? It's tough. We know it. We talk about it all the time. Forget the one before. Forget the one after. We need to focus right now. Batting average is evil. I've never posted batting average. Ever. Kids say, Coach, what did I hit? I said, I don't know what you hit. Who cares what you hit? You could have gone 0 for 4 two nights ago and squared it up and Johnny goes three to four, pulled off a hook and it got lucky it fell in. Did he have a better approach than you? No, but you got to teach it to him. Okay, what's the situation? What is it called for? Anticipate it. My guys, when they're leaving the on deck circle, hopefully they can anticipate what we're going to do based on the game. Okay? Um, can the mode change during the at-bat? Of course. Of course. If I got you um, in a sack bunt situation and you screw it up, okay, we can't straight steal because we're getting a 3-3 three, three combo. Okay, we might have to go ahead and run now. So get your head out of your rear head because you didn't get it down. I'm, I'm, I don't really want to sack with one strike. Now we're going to hit and run. Okay? It changed there. But get the job done, period. That's uh, them again over here. Mentality approach, basic approach. This is our basic offensive play. We're going to split the plate. We're going to teach them what that means. Plate 17 inches. We're going to look eight and a half this side or eight and a half that side. We really want that cookie right down the middle. <coughs> we're going to go get that, guys. I promise you. We're going to go get that. Okay? But if we're looking in our half and we get an outer half, we're going to take that fish. Or vice versa. Now, okay, what are you hunting? Know what we are getting and look for it. Okay? It's not always about what you want to get. It's about what you're getting. We get a thunny coming. He's located. And he's throwing for strikes. Let's look for it. The whole at bat. But when you get it, be ready for it. That is the 70. 
That's the changeup. That's the fastball. You with me? You can't hunt all of them. It doesn't work that way. Hunt one of them. Look at the one side or another. Moving on. Okay. Understand counts, right? This goes into it. Is it your favor, his favor? Are you even? One one's the most pivotal, guys. In our air squad, we're always working one one counts for the hitter's benefit, for the pitcher's benefit. We want the pitcher to win right there. We want the hitter right now in this 1-1 one, one count not to take a free. Do not take a strike in a 1-1 one, one count. Not going to happen. Swing and miss, fine. You take the strike, that's a problem. Okay? You see, a strike thrower is the dude dealing. Then let's go. Let's gear up. Let's go. Let's be ready to swing now. Don't you hate it? Stand in there. Right one, the guy steps out and says, I saw that shit. I saw it too. Let's go. But that's different than a lack of command guy. It is. It's different. With a lack of command guy, we may take that, especially, okay, if he's got no out pitch. Come on, man. Right? You got to be able to hit a fastball. At some point, you got to be able to hit a fastball with us. If you can't handle velocity, we're going to throw you fastballs. We're going to feed you fastballs. We're not going to waste pitches, and we're coming right after you. Now, in a high school game, help me out here. That's two-thirds of your life. I'll be later. you got three dudes. We're going to focus on those dudes. Other than that, we're coming after you. Okay? I don't know what that bottom is. I'll pitch it. Okay? Two strikes. Three, two. Spread out two. Move up two. Get off the knob two. Now, guess what we did all fall? We did three twos in every count and everything we did. Cage work, main field. I mean, everybody. That's choke up. Just choke the heck up. Can you hit it out of the yard? No. I don't know. Maybe y'all, maybe you have a club that hit 50 home runs last year. I don't know. Maybe you did. If, 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 you had a club that hit 50 home runs, y'all were great. Okay? We didn't. We don't. And I've got D1 guys. All of my guys have been off the knob. And guess what we're going to do this year? You watch us play. We're going to be off the knob. Period. We're not going to strike out. We won't walk more than we strike out. We're going to get on base 50% of the time. Now, I've explained this to our guys, right? It's not like they don't understand what that is. I don't even need to do that anymore. It used to be. Okay, you know, you look off two at bats. I'm not telling you that, but guess what? This is what you're in this at bat, right? There are a lot of benefits to shorten up. We're going to flip the field. Left field becomes center, center becomes right. What that means is our timing is going to be late. We're going to force the ball to get on the score. That ball that I would usually catch out here, I'm going to catch it later. Okay? I'm still aggressive. My mentality is there. But my timing's later. That ball I used to hit the center, now I'm driving to right field. Okay? Now here's the deal. We're still going to win two strikes. We're going to be very aggressive. Okay? You can't get past it with two strikes, man. Get the mistake, right? Be ready for the mistake. We're still going to hunt the fastball. Middle of the way. Okay? We're going to look up. That's what we're going to look up. Okay? And in our cage stuff, I'm telling you, man, you know they're in it. If, if, if you give them off-speed front toss, get fastball front toss and all speed. If they're in it and they're looking fastball, they're going to be pull side every time with it. But it's up. If it's up, you're going to do damage. It's going to be <coughs> Okay? You with me? Question. What's the philosophy of the two-strike approach moving to forward to up? Uh, to shorten everything up. Just to be more in your legs. Okay? To be shorter with everything you do. So we can get the barrel there more effectively. Okay, we got guys with an athletic barrel. Because hitting's about controlling the barrel, right? To me, they're going to have more barrel control that way. I see more hitters this day and time. Working. If he's still going to work there, it's going to get there quicker if he's on. It's a shorter level. That's that's my philosophy on that. Um, must cover inner half, but we are not looking for it to react. You know what? If they can paint it inner half, they'll freeze as we're out, man. Good. It happens. It happens. But you know, middle to end, I mean, we can battle that off.
still looking at them. With me on that? Win the battle for people. That's our two strike plan we work on. We're pretty good at it. Take advantage of his mistake. Be ready for that mistake. I am not a believer to look for breaking ball with two strikes. I think it's very difficult to look breaking ball and handle a fastball. I've had players that can do it. Coach, I look breaking ball the whole time. Fine. That's why you were late on that 80 mile hour fastball. I get it. I think guys that can do that. We're not going to do that. Okay? Um, protect the plate. Absolutely no looking third strikes. Expand side to side. Don't forget about up and down. Okay, you got to be big with it, right? That's another reason we move up on the plate, Coach. Yeah. I wasn't. I was talking to Paul. Same yeah, that's going to force the ball same, off. Same block. going to force the ball off. We want to be later with it. Okay? I'm sorry. Did that answer? Yes, sir. Okay. Focus, see it early, floodlight, spotlight. Have him set up, looking at the dude, but not looking at him. He's in his large movements. I mean, you don't want to set up like this when the pitcher's standing here. If we get a guy that sets up like this, we're going to wait a little longer. We want to play fast, but we want you to get more and more. We want you to have more attention, right? So floodlight means, okay, you know, I'm looking at you, dude, but whatever. And now when he starts, boom, we get in that spotlight. We're zeroing in on that release point. Okay, rhythm equals timing. Uh, you know, the tough guys are the ones that throw all of them out of here, right? Same tone. We're talking about that. Those are tough, man. But the earlier you can see it, I'm convinced of that. And we work on seeing it in our drills, the uh, better chance you're going to have to hit, period. Um, we want to be balanced around our swing. Launch position. What is launch position? We'll show our guys what it is. We want to consistently be in an athletic position, ready to hit, inside the feet, loaded, ready to go. In good position, balanced, hands, head, everything ready to hit. We want the bat head last, last, and not first. When I say bat head last, that, that redirects their hands because they know I want bat head last. Obviously, long through it. Most of our guys are long to it, short through it. We, really, it's got to be short to it, what? Long through it. That's what we want. The best hitters I've ever coached are long through the zone. They're longer, their barrel stays in the zone longer. Something like that. Okay, so dry swings and, and, and track. We do fence drill for bat pat. That's part of our daily warm up. I think it teaches them barrel control too. Make sure they're not leaning back when they swing. And that will really, to me, will teach them barrel last. Large to small versus the pitchers that I just went over. Okay, righty, lefty every day with coach, fake coach, or me early in the season or late preseason given my signs, okay? What sign, what did I give you? Hit the run, coach, got it. Okay, well, what did that left-handed throw to you? And he didn't throw it, but he held the ball and finished. That was break ball, coach, good. Because they're gonna call it out every time, break ball. So I'll have, let's say, eight guys. Four guys here, four guys there. These four face the lefty, these four face the righty. I'll give them different tempos to work on. It really helps with their movements and tempo and setup and everything they're doing. Okay? And it reteaches that routine to where when we get in that at bat that we talked about and you get in trouble, hey, get out, breathe, and rely on that routine that we worked on every single day. I think that is huge, guys, for us. Obviously, again, uh, track, live bullpen. <coughs> Whenever we throw pitches, someone is standing in there. It's usually a varsity guy. Could be a guy that's struggling seeing it, right? Uh, it could be a, a bullpen where we're working on out pitches, okay, and he's having a hard time recognizing the breaking ball. Peter, Jake, go, man. Because if they're throwing a lot of breaking balls, I want you to see it live. Obviously, you're not swinging at it, right? But what you might say is yes or no, right? Just to get the tempo and the that's big for us to the track. But game. Check points for all. So for the sack button, um, well, first of all, if I can hit, I can button. In our program, um, everybody can and will be called on the button. And it could be the biggest situation of the year. Now, I don't like the button, don't get me wrong. But if it calls for it, we're going to be ready for it. Okay, a couple things with the sacrifice. The mentality of, man, this is awesome. Coach asked me to move this freaking runner. And I'm ready to do this with the club because I know the importance of getting that runner to second base. Opposed to, <clears throat> right? 
That's your mentality, guys. It is. And we get it. Okay? A couple physical things. Up. Close to the plate. Up toward the pitcher. Okay? We do not pivot and open up. I think it's a balance issue. We're going to close down the front foot. Okay? And we are literally, guys, going to do this. We're going to squat. Feet on the ground. We're going to get the barrel out here. We're going to set it at the top of the zone. We're going to try to be into the bat oriented. Meaning, dead it, but we want to get it out of the dirt. Bottom line is, is to get that runner from where? First to second. Four. Second, third, or first to second. Two second thirds. That's it. Um, but physically, eyes behind the barrel, right? Boom, right there. Top half of the ball, bottom half of the bat, we all say it. What are they doing? Uh, we got lacrosse is big for us. Saw it on Twitter, man. Catch that ball in that lacrosse deal, right? What they work with, their whatever stick, catch a ball with it. Uh, bumper hit, suicide safety, and our suicide got the bunt, man. You got to do it. 100% of the time. Uh, we'll give them bad pitches to work on in our BP, in the cage. Um, safety squeeze is a little different for us. Uh, for the bunt for hit, uh, that game is real important for us. Um, all of our guys possess it. Some do it better than others. Uh, we want for our bunt game, so for communication purposes, drag, okay, is third base. Push is first base. You with me? So even if I say lefty, drag, he knows he's going to push that ball. Third base. Just for us. Just, our guys aren't very smart, right? So that just keeps these things. Drag's here, push is there. Uh, we want on the drag to be perfect or foul. Okay? On the push, it depends. It depends. If we can get by that pitcher and stop that ball right before it gets to the dirt and make that second baseman field it, we win that one. Okay, we can get by the pitcher. So that's going to be more of an aggressive push. Okay? Um, and we will dictate which side we want depending on what we're getting. Individual T work. We don't have many drills. Okay? Um, these are the ones that, that we do to graduate to front toss. Guys, I'm telling you, if I'm in there running that and they're not graduating from these T drills, okay, I won't give them all four every day. I'll give them the ones they need. They're not going to go to front toss. Forget about it. You're not getting line machine. Stop it. It's not going to work. And you're certainly the hell not going to hit on the main field today until you can get this done. It's that simple. So rhythm T, just set up the ball on T, work your hands <coughs> here, here, don't let them stop, boom, hit. Simple as that. In our T stuff, we want to set the ball up in the cage, and we want to see the ball travel in the cage. The goal is back side of the cage, not on the side, either side, or on top. Hit it directly back through the cage to the back. That wall's the back of the cage. Hit that wall in the air. Okay? High T. Yeah, set it up high. Or someone. To stay level through the ball, but not, not do all that. And I know launch angle is not a swing, guys. Launch angle is not a swing. Okay? But it'll teach you not to do that because you're not going to graduate until you learn how to do that. Outside, inside? Okay. We'll set it up here. Teach my setup. Contact, guys. Contact. It's going to happen between here and front foot. It's about that far. We don't want contact back here. We want contact here. Now, I will take out here over back here any freaking day. I want that barrel here. Okay. <coughs> so what I'm saying is, outside T, to get a guy pulling off, it's a bitch pitch down the way, right? Have him hit that ball. Because if he's pulling off, he'll just roll over. But he'll learn to stay through the balls. But there, here, inside, okay, let's work on that. If they're not getting that elbow here to get those hands inside, they're going to struggle with it. So they'll learn to do that. And then right now, T, balls on the T, set the barrel up, right now, and contact on the mound. It's just a good little rhythm tempo deal that our guys really like. So we'll give them three or four, three or two of the four of those whenever they do it, whichever one I think they need. Okay, front toss, take the side, middle end, middle away. We talked about that. Check your takes. Where are we looking, Johnny? Or where are you looking? 
Middle of the way. Ball's pitched. Here's what I want. Yeah, man. Now he's in. I took that coach that was in. Check your face. Now they're going to get through the routine. They're still going to do that. We'll have a series where they step <coughs> out. They're going to find me. I'm not there. They're going to look. Got nothing. I'm going to step in. Large movement. We've gone over that. Small movement. Look at, look at how all this is routine based. Okay, front toss. Boom, let's go. And we'll do that last round. Bad pitches for hit and run. And squeezes. Bad pitches. We just don't want them to hit them in the head, right? Don't, don't get stupid with it. But I think it's important to hit bad pitches. Okay? For those situations. Short overhead. Okay? Typically, our guys are seated and doing that. Back them up as much as you can. Okay, what are we hunting? Oh, oh. What are we hunting? Hunting meaning are we looking for the breaking ball or are we looking for the fastball? Guys, I don't care. Because we've done our work. You know what we're getting. you got to tell me what you're hunting right here. Two strike, we work on that short overhead. Again, one more. In our short overheads, we work these three counts right there all the time. And it'll be one day just OO. -oh. And it'll be one day OO, -oh, this cat's dude, he fills it up. He's a dude. Here he comes. And OO, -oh -oh, and then short overhead, guess what? We'll be coming out of it now. We're going to swing. We're a guy that's filling it up. Promise. Machine. 60, 50, 40. Early in the year, you know, preseason, early in the year, we give them slider away. That's all we give them, slider away. It truly forces them just to stay on that ball. Okay, it teaches them to just see that ball away. I'm a big believer in slider away from the machine. I went over 60, 50, 40 in my earlier talk. Give them the same velocity, start them short, move them back. When they get to 60 feet, it's going to look a little slower. They're going to have a little more time. They're going to be a little more relaxed. Now, up here, if you're giving them at 40 feet the same freaking velocity, what, what is it going to force them to do? They're going to get athletic, shorten up, and learn how to get to that ball. Okay, that's hitting. That's making them the adjustment to me. Okay, that's big for them. Main field. Okay, our modes. Yes, we're going to bunt on the main field. We're going to hit and run. We're going to move runner to third. We're going to score from third. And we're going to have target practice. Now, you don't see gap to gaps in there, do you? I'm not going to do a gap to gap round. Every once in a while I'll say, okay, let's have a feel good round. Hit it over the freaking houses. Let's go. Just to keep them like, just to keep them there, I guess. I don't know. But at any rate, um, bunts, that's live every day. We, we do main field B2. And what I mean by that is we'll play it live. Uh, coach throws. Pitchers will fill those bunts, okay, and make throws. Make sense? Got them ready for that. Uh, hit and run is live for the runner. Again, it could be every pitch. It could be the first or last or however you're going to work on it, right? Um, same with all of them. Score from third is the biggest thing that we'll do, okay? Everybody has a personnel grid. This is how we set ours up, our groups. The names, <coughs> that can change who's hitting. This is base running, bunny, uh, in our groups, who they are during that time. Okay. Uh, everybody has stuff like that. But I think it's important to have that so you're, so you're organized. Um, maybe uh, now. Okay. Here's what I want to spend time on. So let's go. Uh, yeah, so the main thing. This is probably the, when we're talking mostly about this, so how we, oh, okay. how much time do I have there? Go. 15 minutes? Yep, perfect. Very good. Okay. Um, so, imagine, imagine we've got a lot of defense, okay? I told you how we were handling the bus. Um, let's go to hit and run. So, Monty Lee, how many, how many have heard of Monty? They do the live stuff, you got live and dead. Familiar with that? Okay, so live means ball's hit, this runner's live on hit and run. Okay, how could you make a play? Defense is set up, we're throwing the lead base. The only time we don't finish it is coming in the home, right? Because we don't want to, we got a cage up there. Uh, We've got a, a you know, BP 
mat, you know, cover and all that. But we'll do that probably every fourth bit is live but Okay? During this time uh, with our personnel, uh, also know that we're going to change people around a little bit. So that grid I showed you, it could have a, the next day, uh, instead of my normal shortstop there, hey, he's hurt, man. He got hurt. Now my third baseman, you're my, you're my shortstop. You're my play now. Okay, so we'll change personnel uh, during those times. Um, with uh, moving runner to third, uh, obviously there are several ways to do it. We don't like to bunt, but uh, if we have to, we'll work on it during that time. But that's usually getting the ball to the right side. Okay, to move them over, the runners are live. Do that. Every however you want to dictate it. Again, if you're going to live, you're not going to get as many swings. Okay. Um, but that ball's into the outfield. Our first baseman's in place. We we have a catcher during BP. He's lining up first baseman, and we're making a throw. But we're not again going to slide in the whole play. Okay. Um, we can do that with a tough lead, meaning if they don't get the job done. They do not get to hit the rest of the round because they get to run down and touch the fair pole and run back. Sometimes we'll do it competitively, okay, and chart every single one they do. We'll put them in teams and have one in teams, end of the day, and an individual one. We'll tally all of it, have a weekly leader, okay, or a team that's wanting for that one. Uh, that's really good for us. Um, and then score from third. So, again, we're going to spend the most time from third, the most time doing that, and what we're going to do is that, that's time for me, okay, um, to change the defense and how they're working, for example. Uh, infield's in, man, okay? Well, the contact read. Contact read for us, and I get the sign. Okay, my runner that's live at third knows his primary lead is bigger than what it normally is. And my hitter knows I need down contact here, right? I'm hitting the ball on the ground because we're breaking on down contact. That's our contact read velocity on that. We're breaking regardless, even if they're all tight. We're going. We have another read. If the middle's back, we'll see it through the pitcher. Okay? And I'll call a yellow read. And my runner is required to see it through the pitcher. Boom in advance. If my hitter hits it to a corner infield, and we're trying to score a run trying to hit it through the middle, and he rolls over to third base, or hits the ball to the first base, but he's done for the round. If it's competitive, okay, he touches the foul ball and comes back. Yeah, there are consequences, right? So um, what it does is increase focus, and it really helps um, in your situational offense with, uh, with what you're trying to do. Okay, that. Okay, are there any questions? Nothing. Anything on uh, our uh, count stuff? Nothing at all. Anything on our hitting routine? How do you go? You go 40, 50, 60. You go opposite. Sometimes we'll go opposite. Yep. Yep. 60, 50, 40, 40, 50, 60. Guys love that. How fast do you set the Oh, it's normal. You know, that's a normal high school 83 to 85 mile an hour fastball. Yeah. And if we're prepping for like a big arm, uh, a couple years ago, we, here we got the state championship, we, we had a draft pick, you know, he was 94, 96, and we had, luckily I had, we had five, so we had about five days to prepare for him, and we did it that way, 40, 50, 60. And he was legit, 95, he was a fifth rounder, and we, we had a real good plan. We started out twice. And some gaffers. I mean, we were just on, honestly, guys, we were early a lot. I mean, we were really early. Kim, we had that situation. We started with a group of guys at the beginning of the season. Yep. Maybe it's the fall. Yep. Tell, them, tell us what you're telling them about their basic approach on the 1 1 count since it's such a big school. So we're in the fall. We're teaching them our plan. We got a 1 1. We're, we're, because one one count is big. Well, first of all, I make sure they understand why it's the most pivotal. Okay, because if you get one two, okay, you go from a three eighty and a two <coughs> to a one eighty and a one two. 
So the main point there is to be aggressive, but to understand to look one side or the other, but you got to cover. My biggest thing there, what I mean by cover is, is you can't take, you can't take the strike and make it one, two. So we'll work on that in cages. Yes, we'll work on that in our inner squads and everything we do. One more. That'll be, if that's the emphasis for that. From the cage, the main field. Typically when we enter squad, we'll try to get some work in in the cages to kind of lead up to it. Does that make sense? Does that answer you? Yep. Anybody else? Do you tend to, when you're teaching your guys and your approaches, <clears throat> Do you spend time with guys more, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, are you more of a linear guy in your approach to hitting? Well, I think you got to be linear to rotational, right? I mean, I do. I am. Well, personally? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do I teach more linear than rotational? Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can tell a guy he can't turn to hit. Right. Right? Now, if he's turning early, that's a problem. And those are the guys that set off right here. Yes. So to me... When they start, my biggest key for them is this back knee to that front knee here. We look for that and we get them to feel that. Now, if you notice my foot, okay, my heel's off the ground, but my toes that way, right? Okay, we want them to feel that, and that to me keeps them here. So Do you care if a kid different? Some guys talk about they don't care about the back foot on contact. Uh, well, if you watch contact, me, the back foot's going to be off the ground. Right. Okay. So I'm never going to tell a kid to keep your foot on the ground. That was my that's point. what you're saying. Because no I don't teach that either. No, I don't I, teach I that spin. Take it away right. from the energy he's, he's right. got. That, to me, the biggest thing in hitting is everybody leaves everything back here. Right. Instead of to me out through here right. where they right. get it. Right. Where we want to get it. And again, contact point to me is right from the front foot to here. Nice. That area right here, guys. That's contact point. Anything back here is no good? Those are pull foul. Okay. That's our contact point. And we'll show the checkpoints. Okay, we'll put a ball down. And we'll say, <coughs> you know, we'll pull side like I showed you there. Middle of the field, right? Away team, we'll do that with the team. I think it's important to know that, uh, you know, plate doesn't always give you a reference at your feet, right? I could be, I mean, if we're getting a dude that's really throwing hard offensively, Okay, and we're not comfortable. <coughs> you got more time, right? If you get in a soft, funny color, like, move the heck up, right? The other thing is, is uh, you got the sinker guy, guy who's got you gotta make a decision. Either move all the hell the way up or all the way back. Don't be in between. What does that mean for the sinker guy? I'm up in the box, I'm gonna catch it. That plays back here, right? But I'm gonna catch it out here before it gets here. Sinker guy, anything we see middle in, middle in, we're going to take. Anything we see off the plate away to, to away, we're coming out of our shoes. Now we're back. Okay, now we're going to just see it up. Make sense? So I mean, we'll get a lot of those sinker salt side on, guys. That helps us a lot. And we'll try to mimic it as much as we can. You know, but that, that's hard to show there. Right? Certainly with the machine, you can give them that action a little bit. Y'all have the hack attack? The machine man. Really is. Anything else? I will end with this. Whatever your philosophy is, coach it. I think it's important that the kids understand what it is. And then base everything you do around it. I went over base running stuff. Uh, I probably didn't spend as much time as I should have on it. Uh, but know that our guys know we're going to get the second, no way. Or third, hopefully the north. And we're going to base everything we do around that and how to do that. It's not only about hitting, it's about playing, like I talked about. You got to know what the heck you're doing at the plate to create offense. Okay? To waste an at bat is one of the worst things you can ever do. Remember, one out of three is all we need for QAB to get 20 and count it. Count what you do, do it in an inner squad, however you do it. You get 20 or more, you're going to win most of the time. And we judge a lot of our success by that. We hold the kids accountable for it. And we post it so they can see it. You know? but I appreciate your time. Uh, email me, <coughs> call me, it's on the sheet. Uh, I'll see you early tomorrow at 9 o'clock.